All right, so we're back onto Sork. Sork got all the buffs this season in season one, along with Barbarian. And we actually have some very unique builds like this one right here with Chain Lightning for the Sorcerer. And this build absolutely slaps. If you thought you were going to be the Sith Lord Emperor of Diablo 4, then this is the build for you. There is lightning absolutely everywhere, and we get to utilize Chain Lightning destroying everything. Large groups, single target, everything gets electrocuted with unlimited power so today we're going to go over everything you need for the build for skills gear and the paragon and we're only level 76 rocking monsters that are 20 levels higher than us let's get right into it okay guys we're right here inside mercy's reach we're doing a tier 44 right now i'm only level 76 and we're actually rocking these monsters that are over 20 levels higher than us and we're slapping them to pieces so let's go over the abilities that you're going to need and as well as the paragon points and just everything to kind of break this down this build is very very fast which is the main reason i actually like it and my community actually convinced me to actually try this and use the barber i will say right now here at the beginning of the video that this build does require the barber it helps it out immensely now, just like a lot of the builds in Season 1, the Barber does absolutely crush everything. But I do want to, like, emphasize that Chain Lightning did get buffs. Like, it got buffs, and I tried it without the Barber, and it was okay. But trying to fight anything really strong higher than you, like 20 levels, uh, you could manage maybe 10 or, like, 7 levels higher than you, maybe. But the Barber really makes this build actually flow very, very well. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, you could try to do this, do like open world stuff, hell ties, etc. But let's get into the skills and everything that you need. <clears throat> so we're taking two points into Firebolt. We are not running a basic on this setup. We're going to be able to do everything. Our mana is going to be infinite. We're going to be getting mana back nonstop. So we actually don't need a basic. But we do need at least one point into side Firebolt. So that way we have it for our enchantment slot. You could take one point into Firebolt and one point anywhere else. It doesn't really matter. Then we're going to come down to our core skills. We're maxing out Chain Lightning into Destructive Chain Lightning. When we crit, we have a chance to form Crackling Energy. Now, you're probably asking, well, War, why aren't we running Greater Chain Lightning? Okay, the increased bounce actually with the Barber doesn't necessarily help us. Okay, the Barber is already going to, you know, m magnify our damage already. <clears throat> so we don't necessarily need this. Plus, having the Destructive Chain Lightning for Crackling Energy is going to help keep our mana infinite, okay? However, you can. I have tested it, tested this with both, so you could definitely do Greater Chain Lightning, no problem. You're still going to be creating a bunch of Crackling uh, Energy. It's just this. I just like it better. It just makes the build flow a little bit easier. <clears throat> and then we're taking one point into Devastation for mana, but three points into Elemental Dominance. So our core and mastery skills deal more damage when above 50 mana. And like I said, our mana is going to always be regenerating really, really high. So we should be able to always have this proct. Now, what is a sorceress build without almost every single defensive skill in <laughs> their arsenal? So, of course, we're going with teleport we're maxing out teleport here into shimmering teleport for damage reduction and this pairs really well with the remnants um chess piece set that we have for this however remnants is not required but it does really help this build out <clears throat> and then we're taking ice armor into shimmering ice armor for um chances to have the enemies be frozen however you don't necessarily need this either one of these will work you don't necessarily even need the third point but it is kind of nice to freeze stuff if you get that chance then we're taking Frost Nova into Mystical Frost Nova. Frost Nova freezes, makes vulnerability. Enough said with that. Glass Cannon Max for more damage. And then one point into Elemental Attunement for the lucky hit chance to re be able to reset one of our defensive abilities. So if you really wanted to, you could just take this away and put another point here just to have it be 10%. Because you really only want the enhanced armor for the mana regen. <clears throat> In some cases, there's some people that just run Ice Armor by itself with no enhancement just for the barrier. But... I like this a little bit better. Then we're going to come down to our conjuration skills. We are taking one point and align the elements for damage reduction. Then we're maxing out mana shield and protection for a barrier, as well as damage reduction when we spend 100 mana. This build with chain lightning is 30 mana. We're going to be spamming this like crazy. So getting to 100 is very, very easy for damage reduction. Then we're taking three points into conjuration mastery. We deal three times increased damage for each active conjuration. Okay, our conjuration is going to be Lightning Spear. <clears throat> now, we're never actually manually casting this, but we're taking this down to Invoked Lightning Spear so it stuns enemies when critically striking. Um, we don't actually need 
the increased damage here from crackling that we actually want the stun now with our unstable currents this is what's going to help auto cast a lightning spear as well as having it in our enchantment slot so when our enchantments we're going to have lightning spear in there for absorbing crackling energy has a chance to spawn this automatically and then of course we have firebolt enchantment for the burning on every single monster that we deal damage to so we don't actually ever have to manually cast this unless you want to now we're going to come down to mastery skills we're only taking one point inner flames for the increased damage to healthy but more importantly the maxing out devouring blaze for the increased crit chance okay if they're immobilized it's even more and then we're taking static discharge for a chance to uh, form crackling energy as well as shocking impact every time we stun we deal additional lightning damage to them so we're going to get this from our lightning spear as well as our remnants chest piece unique so this makes this very very good it's just added damage nothing too crazy but it is very nice you could actually take this off if you really didn't want to and put it into something else totally up to you then we're going to come down to our ma our ultimate skills we're taking unstable currents and then the prime unstable currents we actually don't need the max here um, because we don't need the additional damage from crackling energy so we're doing prime to increase our attack speed and then we have our normal one so that way we are able to just spam lightning whenever we cast a shock skill we get a random core conjuration or mastery skill so every time we cast a shock we're going to be able to get possibly ball lightning uh, uh, to form lightning spear as well as additional chain lightnings all right, now down here to key passives. For the longest time, I did v do Veer's Mastery because of the increased buff that it had for more damage and uh, the damage less to us. This is actually still very, very strong. However, the overflowing energy, even though we're doing um, Chain Lightning, is actually pretty good. So whenever Crackling en Energy hits an enemy, um, each time Crackling Energy hits an enemy, our Shock Skill cooldowns are reduced. Okay. And we and this is increased when we damage elite really the only thing that we need to be reset should be unstable currents this is going to help us be able to do even more teleports but our cooldown on this is already so quick it's not going to matter we really need this to be able to do more unstable currents all the time okay now if you don't really care about the additional cooldown for unstable currents to try to proc that more you can definitely just do veer's mastery and it works all the same so right now I'm testing it with overflowing, but I have used Veer's Mastery first. Either one is great, totally up to you. So let's get into our gear pieces here. Um, again, we're only level 76 and we're actually absolutely slapping. So in our helmet, we're taking um, a snow field. So that way when we cast on uh, ice armor, we get unstoppable and we grab 10% uh, bonus armor. This is gonna help keep us alive. Then we have remnants of the infinite. Enough said, you guys know what this one does. Uh, we have control here for more damage against stunned, immobilized, or frozen enemies. This is always going to be proc'd. I like this. It's very strong damage. Disobedience for more armor. A ghost walker in our boots. So while we're unstoppable, we gain 19% uh, move speed. I need to get a better. I need to get a 20-something percent move speed or a max one. But it's really good. So teleport's going to make us unstoppable as well as ice armor. So we're going to be moving very, very fast. In our weapon, we're taking conceited because we're always going to have a barrier no matter what for more damage. Elementalist in our cube while we cast above 100 mana we have an increased uh, critical strike chance i really need to get a max roll on this 28 percent is okay but we need to get into the high 30s or a max roll of 40. in our amulet we're still actually rocking a sacred one because this sacred one has all these stat priorities that i want uh we have three ranks in defensive skills we need the additional ranks in devouring blaze cooldown the willpower i'm trying to get re-rolled to mana cost reduction but this is a very, very strong amulet. Um, now, if you want to change some things to be even faster, what I'm looking at doing is doing one that has cooldown, total armor, movement speed. And I would reroll the strength here as an example to get Devouring Blaze. This amulet would be very, very strong. Same thing here. We have defensive skills, cooldown, icy touch is okay. Reroll thorns to movement speed. Something like that. There's always going to be really, really good um amulets is just trying to find the right combination i'm most likely going to be using this one so that way you guys have an idea in our rings we got prodigy every time we use a defensive skill we get cooldown or uh, every time we use a defensive skill um or a cooldown we restore mana everything is a cooldown all four of these are cooldown uh then we have recharging each time chain lightning bounces we gain mana this is both of these are codexes so they're the min rolls right now 
However, if you get a max recharging for three mana, I would dump the prodigies and I would probably just use another offensive skill. I'm not really sure what I would use in this spot, but right now this makes me be able to basically have unlimited mana and just spam chain lightnings like it's nothing. Like I can just spam chain lightning, no problem. So let's go ahead and showcase uh, a little bit of this and then we're gonna go over with the Paragon board that I do have. The build is very, very, very easy. Oh, real quick, in the amulet we have tethered. Chain Lightning has a 45% chance to um, chain four additional times. Now we do have a much higher roll here, an almost perfect one, but I'm waiting to find a better amulet to actually put this on. But you want uh, Unbroken Tether in your amulet, so that way we get more Chain Lightnings, more mana, infinite, infinite spam. <clears throat> so let's go over here and fight these elites and I can just show you how this build works. It's very, very easy. All you're gonna do is spam Chain Lightning, stun them, no problem. Get in here, pop your unstable currents, chain everything. The crackling energy energies are gonna help restore our mana. Come in, very, very easy. And again, these are 98s, guys. We're fighting monsters 22 levels higher than us. No problem. I've been able to clear a 55 with this build. Um, it's a little bit slower on the elites at a 55 or higher, but the build does is just insanely strong. Insanely strong. Come in, remnants. Easy peasy. Just chain, chain, pop unstable currents. We're going to be able to move so fast. See, look how fast our teleport actually comes back up. It's kind of nutty. And we can just infinitely spam. No problem. Now we're going to come in here and hit all these elites up. Oh, yeah. More monsters, the better. Chain everything, get our barriers, unstable currents, spam, spam, spam. Use all of your defensive abilities on cooldown. Use all of them. <clears throat> and just like that, we just wipe everything out. We are the Sorceress Supreme, and this Chain Lightning build is absolutely insane. So let's go over the Paragon board, because I know you guys are very interested in that. <clears throat> we only have three boards, because we're only level 76. However, I will try to finish this and get into um, the end game board so that way you guys will have it. I don't know if I'm going to play Sork all the way to 100 uh, again because it'll be my second Sorcerer to 100, but we'll, we'll, we'll try to do that because I got to finish this board. So uh, we're going to come up to the right-hand side. We're doing Elementalist for non-physical damage. Our first Glyph of Choice is Territorial. We're going to be up close and personal, so the damage reduction is huge, and because the Territorial uh, Glyph got an increase of 5% on damage reduction, it used to be 10 now it's 15% damage reduction, and more damage to close enemies is huge. We're taking uh, a rude, a rudite for uh, resistance, but more importantly, the, the intelligence buff here. Um, we don't actually probably even need this, but we do need the intelligence for future glyphs. Then we got elemental balance for more damage and intelligence with corresponding glyphs. Into our second board, we're taking burning instinct. Okay, we're not going to take this, uh, but we need it for the board for the quick glyph access. So we're going to come up and grab Smoldering Embers for more damage reduction and intelligence, which is huge because everything is going to be burning. Our Glyph of Choice is going to be reinforced. I actually don't have this Glyph leveled up, but we're going to do even more damage to burning enemies, damage reduction, as well as more intelligence, which is huge. And then on our second uh, node or ability, the additional bonus, we'll get 15% damage reduction while we have an active bar barrier. We're always going to have a barrier no matter what. So this is always going to proc. It's going to make super tanky. Then we're going to come in and grab cinders for more damage and intelligence with corresponding nodes. Okay, we're going to come up and we're going to grab a safeguard for more damage reduction in armor. Corresponding nodes. Kindling for more damage against burning enemies as well as elites. Corresponding nodes is actually very, very good. We actually want that extra one there. I don't know where I put it, but uh, we actually want that one there for even more damage. <clears throat> then we're going to come over here to our third one and we're taking the elemental or enchantment master our enchantments are 20 percent stronger we don't actually need this we're super fine with what we have so we're going to come up and we're going to grab um elemental balance for more non-physical damage and intelligence our glyph of choice is going to be flame feeder this is a standard one in most sorcerer builds so we're doing even more damage against burning and we deal 10 percent times increased direct damage to burning enemies super super strong then we're grabbing a uh, Rudite again <clears throat> for even more um, uh, resistance as well as intelligence. Then we're going to come down and grab Elementalist, non-physical damage and max life corresponding nodes. Very good. Then we're grabbing Ruinous, 
We're grabbing more non-physical damage and more importantly, the damage against elites with all corresponding nodes. Now I'm heading up here to my fourth board. This we're going to end up picking something here and then picking up something here. A lot of the ones that I want to get is, <clears throat> excuse me, Static Surge is very, very good with the nodes. Stunning Close Enemies restores mana, although we don't need it. Uh, Ceaseless Conduit, we don't need. The Conjuration Skill cooldown is, is good. Searing Heat for more crit chance, but a lot of these are going to be based on the rare nodes. We may or may not even have a legendary node in this build, um, which will actually make it kind of unique. But we'll see what we're doing on the build. So that is the Paragon board for now, guys. So this is Sorcerer Chain Lightning. The build absolutely slaps now there's a lot of room here for a lot of changes you don't have to run control you actually don't this build doesn't even require remnants of the infinite um i actually just found this and it just makes most builds better if you wanted you could swap this out and use a defensive skill you could do um uh there's the one where you can spread more crowd control it can affect more enemies stuff like that or if you wanted to you could add the power on the chest to give you an additional frost nova which is actually really strong. You could um, you can do the lucky hit chance increase when you have a barrier. A lot of these things are really, really good. Your mana regeneration. There's some very good one. Yeah, Frost Blitz for the additional Frost Nova. So you have some very, very good options here. Um, it just really depends on what you guys want to do. But since I found Remnants, this just really helps the build a lot. So guys, that is Chain Lightning. Like the video, comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. We're only level 76 and absolutely slaps super super uh hype that we have a unlimited sith lord power build in diablo 4 so guys make sure to sub if you're new and as always stay gaming i'll catch you guys in the next one peace